level 64 present. A play toy that video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi there, welcome to a brand new series of Lemon 64 game guides and reviews. In this very first game guide, we will be taking a look at Whizball, developed by Sensible Software and released by Ocean in 1987 on the Commodore 64. So, Sensible Software there, John Hare, as we shall see later on, Chris Yates, they created this game and they went on to bigger and better things. But if your average experience of whizball amounts to basically getting lost within the first few minutes, then perhaps this play guide and review will help you out. Because whizball is a very deep game and it may appear very shallow at first glance or perhaps very overwhelming at first glance. I've certainly found this game difficult. I didn't understand the power-ups and the missions and everything involved even though I read the manual. It wasn't until I observed a friend playing the game and he helped me out with one of few tips that I actually quite got into this and I spent literally hours of my life playing Whizball. It's one of the greatest Commodore 64 games ever created, dare I say, of all time because the depth of this shooter is beyond compare. It's certainly unique and it's certainly, well, those explosions there are pretty unique on the Commodore 64. You can see demo scene graphics there at every opportunity and the game pushes the lowly Commodore 64 to its limits. The action is packed and everything is fluid. But basically if you gave the game five minutes and gave up just like I did then you would find the game very difficult to get into and you wouldn't find the finer aspects which makes this a unique shoot 'em up. So let's take another look at this game from the beginning and let's see if we can't work this game out. You can see the game opens with a brief look at the high score table which logs both one player and two player action. But by pressing fire we can actually take a look at the player options. Surprisingly this game allows more than one player. Yes we can play as two player or even two player team mode and the game even allows three and four players to play in a match but you can see there if we select to bring up the tips the most important thing is to waggle the joystick to select the green items the green items in the bubble you can pick those up and gain power-ups at the beginning of the first three or four lives you'll encounter a field of power-ups and they will be protected by a force field you will have to shoot that force field away and then you can collect these green orbs and each orb will give you one power up by waggling left and right there we can now steer left and right due to that one power up and if we waggle the joystick left and right that will give us the item in this case i've chose to collect the side beams the first slot in the icon box controls our maneuverability so if we select the first icon again that will allow us to travel in full motion all the way around the level and that saves us bouncing around and colliding with objects. The next object I will select is the cat and you can see the cat by holding down fire the cat will move ahead and it will also independently fire of us and we can use the cat to collect those red items which are actually droplets of paint. Yes, we have to colour these levels in and just in case you thought these levels were drab and grey and boring, yes, that's the whole point. Each level comprises of three colours, a primary colour and ones which need to be mixed. So in this level, the first primary colour is red and once we find all three of those colours, then that's the level complete. To get there, we have to survive various waves. Sometimes there will be enemy attacks and sometimes there will be red droplets there and we can use the cat to collect those and they will appear in the flask which appears when we collect those and you can see our flask is almost full and so sending the cat out ahead there is an early tip you can be protected there with the side beams 
and use the cat to hoover up the level. In the meantime, that's a full flask completed, and that takes us to a bonus level. Here we can gain a number of score extras and even power-ups there by destroying a number of enemies and they will appear in a set attack pattern which does not vary from bonus level to bonus level but you can see I'm being able to upgrade my shoot there by the second token is flashing and I'm actually choosing to die unfortunately. If we die in the bonus rounds then that won't matter and it will even give us a power-up of our choice. In this case, I'm choosing to use the Whiz Spray, and the Whiz Spray is one of the most expensive and one of the most powerful weapons in the game, but I will only have that weapon when I die. At the bottom of the screen, you can see that the power-ups that we collected in the bonus round still exist, but I'm resisting the temptation to upgrade to Rapid Fire at the moment. Let's upgrade that with some more power-ups, and let's sneak around that level. You never know whether you're going to be attacked by enemies or paint, and if it's paint, well, you cannot collect those because we have not got the cat. Luckily, those side beams, if you aim those, and, well, if you can strafe the enemies without getting shot, that's one way to survive. Below the horizon, the bullets disappear, so that is a safe place. And so if you are being attacked by lots of bullets, simply duck under the horizon. But... I cannot collect the paint because we have not collected the cat and we have not destroyed enough enemies to collect the power-ups and so let's avoid the paint well that's a wasted opportunity there and destroy the enemies and hope that we can collect back the cat and at that stage the cat is the most important thing and having that destroyed in the bonus round is certainly an unopportune effect so there we go let's have the cat on this level, all the droplets will be red, unless you find an extra special coloured droplet. The black droplet being a night out droplet, which turns everything black. And there is a blue droplet, which will alert the police, as we shall see later on. And there will be a white droplet, which will give us an extra life. At the moment, we have two lives, as shown by the yellow two there in the top left corner. And one indicates that there is one enemy in one attack pattern left on that level to find. Once we find that, no matter what it is, it could be one droplet, but there it is, one enemy. Let's backtrack and force that to respawn. Once that is over with, then a new batch of enemies will respawn and we can take those on. There you go. And we gain some little score for doing that. Let's take a look. The enemy's pin is in the corner there and we can actually use the cat. We can use the landscape as a shield and use the cat to attack those and that's a risky business but the cat can take five or six hits before it gets killed normally unless that gets destroyed by an asteroid in the bonus round so using the cat as an early defense mechanism is most important and that has already revealed a bonus you should gain a bonus for destroying every attack wave and if you don't well that's unfortunate but using the cat and the scenery again as our early defense we only have two lives so best make the best of those sometimes if you can stay in one place on the level for example strafing the top or hanging around in the middle of the level is probably better because if you find any bullets heading your way you can always dip below the horizon and destroying a few more of those things has revealed an extra life so we are now on three that's the easy way to gain an extra life and that gives us a cushion so you can see there, I am collecting more of those red paint droplets. On the left, you can see the red flask is building up, and on the right is the purple. Although we have not collected the second colour, the colour will materialise because we have a certain portion of red to collect. And then when we have enough of that red colour to meet that purple, then we'll have to find the blue. So avoiding those enemies has never been more crucial and again ducking under there will sometimes give us a tunnel of opportunity so i think we've collected more or less enough reds on this level let's just see if we can survive another attack wave by those guys sometimes it's best just to survive and continue the level anyway but you can see there is only three enemies on the level so now there is only one and it's a red droplet so let's collect that but this level will only give us those red droplets and to collect the rest we must go up another level and to another section of the game. 
This is level two, and here we'll find green droplets. And you can see the first color in the landscape is brown. We already have the red, so if we mix red and green, we'll eventually get brown, and that completes one of the three steps to completing this level. And so it opens nice and easy in there, and I can just nip in, grab those colors. But we still have not found the best weapons in the game. They come later on, and so the big two in the corner basically says we're on level two there is another level higher up than this and you can see the holes on the floor there if we should duck down into those holes we will return down to the red level and along here we'll find a number of up symbols and that will take us on to the blue level at the moment i'm collecting those things but you can see that collectible has actually acted as a shield and we have not collected enough for what we really want and that's the laser or really the spray is the best weapon and on level two you can see the enemies are just a little tougher and even though we can use the cat to get rid of those unfortunately we cannot collect that pickup simply because that's in an inaccessible place dare we continue with that weedy fire power or return to the easy red level well we'll choose for now to continue Unfortunately, some of the collectibles that we can pick up actually destroy our chances and that purple droplet will actually send the cat crazy. That means that he will fly around the screen and act crazy for maybe two minutes or so and if he collides with anything that will destroy him, if he doesn't he will continue being crazy. And so the only thing we can do is to either wait for that thing to run out or run around the level and hope that thing gets destroyed and then we'll have to buy ourselves another cat you can see the token there is actually on the cat and so if we wait for that thing to die we can then simply upgrade and buy ourselves a brand new cat fortunately if we hang around the same place on the level too long we'll find the law come after us and so we can't afford to hang around very long in one place and so let's use the cat in its wild mode and see if we can't destroy that one way or another and so we cannot collect these red dots because the cat is now beyond our direct control that now moves around of its own accord so let's just move into the action and hope there you go it gets blown up and now we can recruit ourselves uh oh we cannot recruit ourselves a brand new cat but we can collect the laser do I really want to collect the laser? Well, the whiz spray would still be better in that case if I can collect another power-up and that was certainly a wasted opportunity because that means I can no longer collect the vital colours I need on this level. We still need half of those colours to be filled. We have most of the red but we still need much of the green. We can only do that with the cat. So let's collect the whiz spray and that will help us defend ourselves on this level and we'll have to collect the cat later. At this stage, it's best to inch forward and lure those enemies onto the screen one by one and take on one attack wave at a time. If we should run ahead, then we will find more than one attack wave will attack us on screen and that just makes our life harder, particularly when we have not got the cat. And although the whiz spray now enables us to shoot diagonally, that is still harder than having the cat there to back us up and so we are still waiting there although paint doesn't really help us in this case still waiting there don't collect the black and not that the whiz ball can collect those clues anyway if you collide with the paint you will die and take on damage well i think you will die outright i don't think there is damage in this game and that's unfortunate because well we have to protect those three lives at all costs and at the start of this game you have to play it strategically you can't afford any mistakes, you have to inch forward and so we're trying level 2 here to try and find more of those green orbs to power up and get the cat. That's the first one over, only two more to find. And so you have to play the long game when you're playing whiz ball. The plays are tremendously long and you may spend one, two, three hours playing this if you get deep enough into it. And we will only be clearing the first few sections in this playthrough guide and there are at least another six that we will not cover later on. 
So the levels in this game are really time consuming and you have to watch every one of those bullets because one of those can just wipe us out and if it does so that will detriment our upgrades. At that stage the only upgrades that we will have after our life loss are the ones that we've managed to power up by the wizard at the end of the bonus levels. We've only managed one bonus level at the moment so all the upgrades that we will have will be the whiz spray. Let's hope we can survive. And it's difficult with those enemies bouncing. There you go, that's a nice upgrade. And look at that, periodically it will give us a batch of free upgrades. So let's sneak into that one, hope that we collect one before we die. And get the cat. Easy does it. And it's a nice safe distance there. We can now use the cat and release the rest. And you can see how beneficial the cat is, but look at that, those enemies there. Unfortunately, we cannot shoot them through the bubbles of those orbs, but they cannot shoot us either, which can pose a problem in itself. Let's see if we can grab the laser. And yes, that's the laser in the bag. So now we have a nice weapons upgrade. We can take on those enemies with more confidence. And at this stage, now that we have all those weapons lit on the bottom bar, this game takes on a new meaning. First of all, instead of a creep em up, it turns into a shoot em up. We can go in there all guns blazing. We can take those guys on on the horizontal and on the diagonal too. And the laser even means the cat is upgraded to the laser weapon, which means he can fire with more strength. You can use the cat now to take on those green paints and you can take on those enemies directly. This new shoot em up aspect to this game really adds to the player's experience and taking on those enemies directly is certainly more fun than inching around the level. Although, as you can see, I'm hanging back because just one bullet at this early stage can write off our chances. The green is now full, so let's get out of here. If we can, bounce around back to the red level and a few of these red dots, a few of these Paints will then complete the colour and we have all the green we can carry. We have now all the red we can carry on that level but if we move on to level 2 well we still need a little blue actually to get the brown that we need for that level and so we have to go to the third level and there is only one entrance to that level here it is that's done with the up arrow there and if we go up that will take us to the top level and that level is coloured blue here we'll find a blue droplet to help us in that quest on our primary colours and a few blue droplets there cat acting very helpfully there and on this level you can see a Lincoln on Mount Rushmore and those graphical effects certainly add an extra something to this game they make it feel quirky and they make it feel polished in fact they make it feel cutting edge and I can't help feeling that some of the effects on this game there you go managed to get that color I can't help feeling that even today some of these great effects will work on a modern game in its day it was unique and cutting edge and even today it still feels weird and mysterious and actually very fun Yes, even though these things come at us thick and fast and we take an onslaught from these things, particularly in the bonus rounds, but the fact that we can't die means at least we can power through those and we can use our whiz spray and our newly acquired weapons to get ourselves a few upgrades. I'm actually on the cat spray at the moment and that means that the cat will now take on the spray and we can use the cat and send that out in front of us and that's probably the best weapon in the entire game. On the control panel at the bottom you can see another vacant thing which is the bomb and that will blow everything up on screen and right at the end we can also acquire a temporary shield but for the moment let's choose another power up which we shall gain when we die and yes let's collect the cat spray so that when we die the cat will instantly have the cat spray and that's probably the best and the most expensive weapon probably the hardest to get in the entire game but here we go, this is still our third life and unlucky the police there trying to gun us down and the enemies really do aim on targets so you can't afford to hang around the screen. Dodge and move is the option in this game and if you can, dodge out of the way. 
and move on to the next level, then you'll be fine. In this game, sometimes matching colours isn't the easiest thing because you have to be good at science and you have to work out exactly which colour you are missing. In this case, we are still missing the blue. But while we are here, we can pick off these two last reds and they will help us so that when we appear on a new level, sometimes that will automatically complete the quota. So let's see if that works on level two. And it does. We now have the brown. So with that little bit of blue there in our stock, we still had enough to complete the brown. And unfortunately there, we have died instantly in the bonus round. And that gives us 13 credit for killing 13 enemies. And so let's select another power up. By this stage, the score begins to rack up. We are approaching 40,000 points there, which is a great score. You can score hundreds of thousands. And we have yet to complete level one. Don't forget, we have one color on level one, and this is our second color on level two. We now have light brown. And given the Commodore 64's limited color scheme, I think the graphics and the producers of this game certainly made a well-crafted game on the graphics front. All the enemies appear solid and 3D, and those fake 3D landscapes there. The circular objects remain tubular and circular, and that's all you can hope for on a Commodore 64. In the bonus rounds, we have demo-like effects, and nothing in this game really slows it down to a grind, even with lots of enemies on the screen. So it's certainly been well-programmed and well-coded. Meanwhile, on the 64, I am just about to collect another batch of those green droplets in an attempt to fill that green flask to the top before we exit this level. It's always best to collect that flask's worth before we exit, and that will automatically save us having to return back and defeat these enemies all over again. If we allow an enemy to move off the screen, then that will not be counted on the wave counter at the top of the screen, so unless we destroy all those enemies in the wave counter, then we will find enemies lurking to kill us, and the only way we can find those green droplets is to fire ourselves into those spots and negotiate our way towards them. And you can see with the cat spray there, the cat is now our early defense, and we are just one away from the next upgrade, which is actually a shield. So let's select that, and we are now invulnerable for a number of seconds while we have the shield. The shield is supposed to save us crashing and dying into anything, but in my experience, sometimes the enemy bullets will still kill us despite the shield. So even though we have that thing, it's always best to watch out of the enemy bullets. And so that's the green over with, and we still have the shield, so let's run down the level back to the red on the bottom of the map and collect a few of those reds. At this stage, it's important to back off and slow down because if the player is too gung-ho and they pile into there too quickly, then it's an easy way to lose a life. So in this case, well, that only saved a life and one stray bullet. In this case, I didn't even get time to see that, but that lost our first life. And so we shall return back to the game. Look at that excellent demo code introduction there between levels and even a weird atmospheric effect in between the stages. But now we only have the bounce and we have the cat and we have the spray, but it would be so easy at this point to bounce directly into one of those protected items and die. So let's not do that. Getting out of these corners isn't particularly easy sometimes, and so let's take it nice and easy. We can alter our rotation speed and bounce around the level like pinball, so let's not do that. And as soon as we acquire our first two pickups, we can now steady ourselves and take on the rest. That's the only danger area, and I think next time that we find those bonus rounds, maybe it's best to pick up one of those power-ups and save us being in danger just like that. But you can see there, we are virtually back to where we were. We have the spray and the laser, and apart from the side arms, the side beam we have yet to collect, but just like that, we have now collected it. So, on with the level, just like that. And yes, it's taken us 24 minutes to lose our first life, which is not bad. But as I say, the player can be playing these levels for hours. There certainly is no time limit in the game, 
and there is certainly no health to drain or anything which depletes. So as long as we avoid the hail of firepower, we can continue and carry on as before. So sometimes dodge and move and backing into those corners helps because sometimes those flickering bullets tend to merge into the star field in the background and sometimes in the thick of the action those bullets, as we have seen, can hit us and lose our lives just like that. So not being gung-ho at this stage and sending the cat in because that has the firepower and that can take the hits. Being strategic about the levels means that I shall collect more of those red droplets to have a red flask before I exit this level because I anticipate as soon as I exit this level and perhaps find the blue level and then that will give us the extra colour. And look at that, enemies forcing me off the screen there and I'm having to run away in my flight away from those but usually somewhere around the lower centre of the screen is the best position to be in because you can get those guys on diagonal and the range of enemies in this game do vary from level to level and they are very well drawn and they do differ they do bounce around differently and behave differently and sometimes those enemies are quite harmless and you can pick those off quite easily and sometimes they are deadly it's important not to bounce off the scenery because we can bounce off the scenery and just collect that extra life there we can bounce around the scenery and that actually runs us into an enemy so the bouncing around code aspect is very well done and again a unique part of the game so here we go the bonus level again let's see if we can get any further it may surprise you to know that if we get far in the bonus level we will acquire an extra life and so if we had got far on all these bonus levels we would have been up to seven already but let's try to get that extra life at least one and the bonus level isn't easy with all these things bouncing around you'll find the same pattern on every single bonus level as i say so as long as we have those upgrades we have a fighting chance of survival my best tip is to upgrade all the way to the shield and then use the shield on the third asteroid wave of which this is the second one save up those orbs and use the shield and that should hopefully protect us against the hardest of the enemies and those asteroids and those flashing circles there making our life difficult if you stay in the middle of the screen that i find gives you the best chance of survival and you can literally move around the enemies there and try and pick those off one by one and this is the third and the hardest boulder field let's see if we can survive it we do not have the shield yet we have another upgrade towards the shield and everything is looking good so far again stay around the center of the screen very lucky very lucky there to avoid those things and we should find well a warning there for epileptics the screen does flash intermittently there and that's quite unnerving but after the police and just after the bonus life we find probably the hardest section of them all because these guys fire very rapidly and if you don't quite make it then those guys will wipe us out so just like that one spray later and all we can do is use the bonus to upgrade our special weapon in this case yes we will upgrade the very first weapon and we'll get that to save us bouncing around you can see the cat there actually emerges for its cat bowl and takes a, a drink there and a bite to eat and wow we've completed one of the levels we've completed all three colors and so that's level two oddly out of sequence completed and that dumps us on level three you see the three there in the bottom corner so we can always tell which section we are on so let's collect that primary blue there because we'll certainly need that to collect level one you can see the blue piling up the first color is usually a primary color but not always so it, sometimes if you collect all the colors on that particular level that gives you a bonus round for free and so let's turn that into reality it seems all we need is the blue paint to color the background in blue in this space level and again the enemies do change and the enemies do vary sometimes they can be hard and sometimes they can be very easy 
random factors like being unable to shoot through orbs and using the shield at strategic moments can help and there is always opportunities in this game to progress. The level designs are novel and well thought out and the tremendous music and sound effects just cap a perfect game. And you can see those arrows there, if we follow those that will simply materialise us on exactly the same level because there is not a level above this one. You will see three down arrows which is the way to go to get back to the green level so let's not bother following that up but sometimes I like to touch the edge there and that respawns a new attack wave in this case it's a bonus wave and so at this stage once we have all those weapons the bonus waves are practically useless all we can do now is to collect those shields and it would be nice to be able to use those for other weapons but there is a nice selection of weapons in the game and once the player powers up there and has the shield they can really feel like they can be brave and power through the level so that's all the blue collected and so let's enter that bonus level again it would have been a good idea to change the bonus level but having said that even though these attack patterns are identical it means these can be memorized and every time I play the bonus level I seem to be getting just that little bit further and so at least these levels can be memorized and it doesn't play unfairly with random enemies and random gunfire filling the screen. Skipping ahead there you can see we've made use of our old friend the shield to get us through the third of one of those asteroid fields and the third asteroid field is probably the hardest as far as I'm concerned and the police there pose absolutely no threat on the bonus level they don't even fire any missiles and so there you go that's the extra life shoot that and now we're up to five in this case curiosity ended up killing the cat and so we have no cat on the main level but we have a few more upgrades and this level continues with harder and harder and harder enemies and hopefully there will be an extra life further down the line than this and I think you can collect two lives in the bonus round but look at that enemies count there really racking up the score we almost have 100,000 points there and we have yet to complete the first level and we now have over 100,000 points there which puts our lives up to six So while you continue to watch me collecting those extra colours to fill in the landscape I will just tell you a little background information about this game. This game was produced by DC Ward of Ocean who also produced most of Ocean's other conversions and classic games on the Commodore 64 including Chase HQ and Robocop. The graphics were created by John Hare who started with Galaxy Birds on the Commodore 64 in 1986. He then went on most famously to Parallax also in 1986 for Ocean and Parallax he did the graphics for that which was very well received. He then went on to co-create the Macro Pro Soccer game in 1988 after Whizball and Whizball was a 1987 release so Micro Pro Soccer was then later released as Sensible Soccer since this was sensible software that would make sense and so even though Micro Pro Soccer was a hit on the 64 and a very big flop on the Amiga they renamed that Sensible and the rest is history. The code was created by Chris Yates who also coded the Insects in Space game in 1989 and went on to International 3D Tennis in 1990. The incredible music in this game was crafted by Martin Galway who is probably more famous on the Commodore 64 for his Cosmic Bakery theme in 1988 and the Cosmic Bakery theme was used by Ocean Software as their famous loader music which was changed and modified over the years he was also responsible for Rambo First Blood Part 2 and the music for Combat School and Boot Camp and even Yeehaw Kung Fu. So Martin Galway there with a very nice legacy on the Commodore 64. I certainly appreciate the music in this game and the title music is very well done 
but to my mind, the ending music on the high score table is excellent, actually very atmospheric and thematic. So all the music and sound effects and incredible background noises that you can hear on this game and the weird static sound effects that simply mingle into the background, simply like a white noise effect, and that adds to the game and makes it more sci-fi. So this game is certainly sci-fi there, look at that bouncing around with a whiz ball and a cat behind us blowing away enemies basically on the moon. So whoever came up with this game idea must have been on some kind of other planet to begin with but the outcome, as you have seen, hopefully, now that we have a few more colours in the weapons upgrade, the outcome of this very strategic tactical shoot em up with all its good points and bad points, is a masterpiece. The bad points, well, there aren't that many bad points to note. In fact, I can't think of any off the top of my head. The controls are very fluid and fast, and the inertia is present there. That is custom-designed inertia, so the whiz ball will carry on rolling and bouncing around, and that's fine, because once the player gets used to that, they expect it. That gives extra freedom in this 3D environment, and bouncing around there actually reassures the player of the very strong controllability and the game mechanics, so that is fine. The player doesn't often get stuck in the scenery, but sometimes items get stuck in the scenery, and oftentimes we cannot pick those up. If you shoot somebody behind a large patch of scenery where only the cat can get to and the whiz ball can't, like this section here, if we duck down, we have to wait for that guy to appear through the scenery, and yes, the enemies can move straight through the scenery like it doesn't exist sometimes, and maybe that's a bug in the code, but that doesn't really affect much of the game and certainly doesn't spoil anything. You can see I'm using the cat there on the top of the screen to rain fire and that is what I like to call the cat shower. Simply stay at the top of the screen and basically hide the whiz ball behind some cover and we can use the cat to shower down upon them just like this and then reach down and grab those things from above. Statistically, the top of the screen does have the most enemies, but because we have the laser, that means statistically if we use the cat as a cat shower, that will get rid of the most enemies and keep us safe. So we can always duck down there at the most opportune moment. So even tricks like that, and using the cat there and getting rid of those enemies, yes, this game really does take on extra dynamics at this stage, and even with five lives, I can't afford to be careless. So let's use the up arrow to return to the top layer and back to the blue level. So as I say, the graphics are superb, the atmosphere is superb, the sound effects are superb, the Martin Goldway music is excellent and thematic and memorable, the game has been well programmed, oh, managed to kill my own cat there, very well programmed, and you can see the themes and everything else really stand in the mind and the character of this game is unique so I can only give this game high praise and so we will definitely get to the magazine scores a little later on and well unfortunately I've managed to kill the cat yet again which has meant that I'm unable to collect these last few items and so that is part of the game design if you kill the cat then you'll have to build that back up and that's still no hardship because once the player has worked that out that's not so bad, but sometimes this game has a very steep learning curve to the beginner and unless they know a certain number of tricks and they know how to use the cat, well, managed to get killed there, they know how to use the cat to collect those coloured items, then they can progress. If they don't know what to do, then the complexity of this game and basically the weirdness of this game can put some casual players off, but to my mind, Everything about this game reminds me of a masterpiece and I can't actually think of many ways in which they could have improved it so that gets my thumbs up and seal of approval. So the action is always packed and the player can never anticipate getting killed. They just get killed and so the surviving aspect of this game and the soldier of fortune guerrilla war attacks on these landscapes 
or it's certainly something the player has to master if they want to get far in this game and yes just like the SAS use all cover for your own protection and well it looks like we have a mad cat there we can shoot those blobs but those blobs of paint won't do us any good well that's unfortunate again sometimes you can pick up extra lives but sometimes you can pick up a mad cat so the sense of humor in this game still shines through And so, to my mind, everything about this game feels smooth, fluid, and professional. And the demo effects even add a layer of wow factor to this game. And I certainly remember everybody on the Commodore 64 at least knowing about this game, even though most of us at the time didn't know really how to play it. So I only have good things to say about this game. Let's speed up the action because now that we've seen most of the good bits, now all we need to see are the extra levels. As you can tell, I have nothing but respect for this classic title on the Commodore 64. And I hope this was a massive breakthrough hit for Ocean. It certainly was at my house. Taking a look at the scores, Commodore User and CNVG both gave this 80%. Commodore Format gave this game 85%. Commodore Force gave it 96%. Zap eventually decided to give it 97% after many attempts at the review. Your Commodore gave it 10 out of 10. And basically, so the average score is 9 out of 10. But your Commodore with its 100% said it was absolutely brilliant. And the only thing the magazine reviewers basically said that was wrong with this game was the fact that it had a steep learning curve and it might take a while to click. This game certainly has clicked with me, and so you can see me fast forwarding there, the bonus, get another life. Despite losing life after life there carelessly, we can still collect those in the bonus round. And so if we are masterful in that bonus round, we may have 10 lives by now. So the game certainly plays fairly, and even though the harder levels really do get hard later on, the game does reward us and our own skill can provide extra lives at our own discretion. So there's nothing here on this level which I really need. You can see there one drop remaining. Let's find that one last drop and I'm basically, well, kill the enemies there. Let's get the last blue ones and hopefully retreating. Well, more bonuses later. Yes, the game being generous yet again at every stage, giving us those colors and those bonuses just when we need those and easy enemies to kill so yes the game does play absolutely fairly and if we die we don't lose lives in the bonus round which as far as i'm concerned is absolutely fine so that's the last weapon complete and so when we die all the weapons in the game will now be ours you can see level three completed so we've done level two we've done level three so let's return to level one Let's not tempt fate by trying to get stuck in that landscape because sometimes it is possible if you tempt that fate, so let's not bother. And yes, this game was converted to a large number of platforms. Well, basically all the 8 bits plus the ST and the Amiga. And I think even the PC eventually got its own version as well. In 1992, Sensible Software also came back with a pseudo sequel named WizKid which was released on the Amiga and the PC and the Atari ST and WizKid was a more comical take on the Wiz formula and was an incredibly original game in its own right but received mixed reviews but certainly WizBall on the Amiga was certainly inferior to WizBall on the Commodore 64 mainly because of the sprite size and the game handling and the whole feel of the game felt completely different on the Amiga with the bigger screen size and the smaller enemies while on the Commodore 64 everything felt big and bold and chunky like it was meant to be there. So I prefer the 64 version and I think that is still the best. Let's return now all back to level 1 and complete level 1 and getting further in that bonus round. Uh, 
and it looks like we need an extra colour to make up the three on level one and it's odd that we should be completing level one after we've already completed level two and three but once we have completed all of the first three levels we will be given an extra three and I could be wrong but as far as I know there are nine levels in the game so it presents an extra three after that there may be even more but the player can certainly spend hours playing this and as long as they continue they gain extra lives so it gives the player extra impetus to continue and finally we found the cyan colour which is the last colour that we needed on that level one so let's skip through the bonus round well let's just die in the bonus round and then collect yet another item well we do not have any room for another item I do not really want to buy the whiz spray because we have the cat spray but if we hopefully leave that alone and select a non-object then that will complete that level that teleports us on to level six and as you can see at the bottom level six is the blue level and so the blue primary color will be on here we can also move down to level five and level four and there will be green and red so let's check those out that's level five which is underneath level six and if we go up again we will return to level six so if we go down from level six then we should return but it isn't always easy because the maps and the mazes the level designs in this game aren't always easy to figure out top and bottom but we do know in this case that the easiest thing to do is to collect those colors and we can continue building up those primary colors and we can color in the level you can see at this stage that the later stages are quite narrow with those stalagmites and stalactites there if we go up that will simply take us back to the same stage so the player may notice arrows or signs or symbols above some of these teleport points and sometimes they'll be accurate and sometimes not the best thing to do is just to learn those by trial and error and find the correct one the correct teleport to get us back to the level that we want and in this case here we go this is level four and finally we hit the red level on here we can see wells and branches and trees there and yes it is important to send the cat out ahead to scout that area and then when we squeeze through these branches hopefully we don't get fried by all this firepower and that's basically my play guide and review over i hope you guys have enjoyed that i think that whiz ball is an immaculate masterpiece and nothing will change my mind on that fact it just takes some time to get into I hope I've been able to show you guys some of the depth of the game and as you can see the later levels include more depth and more atmosphere. Look at that squeeze through that gap there. So yes, I really do respect this game. And thank you for watching this play guide and review. Hope to see you on another C64 or even a Lemon Amiga review sometimes too.